So now we're ready to export our final images from on one photo raw. So what I'm going to do is click the first photo, hold down the command key and hit a to select all of my photos. And then what I'm going to do is come over here to the right side. So I am the author of these photos. When I negotiated the contract, I made sure that I retained all of the rights to the photos, to anything that I photographed here, but I was just delivering uh, final edits that they can use for their social media and future promotion of the bike race. Now, in the description box, I'm just going to type in a short description and you can put whatever you want in the description box. For me, whenever I photograph for a client, I usually like to put a description in there because that helps them with their metadata on the back end as well as keywords. Now, these were the agreed upon keywords when I went ahead and photograph this, they're going to add more keywords for their marketing team and however they choose to do that. But for me, I just needed to add in those uh, keywords that I needed. Now, with that being said, some of these actually use the keyword, the AI keywords. And since those are close enough to what the event is about, I'm not even going to worry about it. I'm just going to leave those alone. The reason this says mixed is because some of the photos don't actually have those keywords in it. And that's fine. All of them don't need to have the same keywords. So once I have the description and the keywords, the areas that I think that everyone should probably pay attention to if you're working with clients is by clicking the IPTC and then clicking and adding an email address, a website, and then the copyright, which for me, I put the copyright symbol, which is option G on a Mac, and then type in all rights reserved 2023. Now, I don't know what the keyboard shortcut is to make the copyright symbol on PC, but if you do a quick Google search, I'm sure you'll find it. Now, the usage terms, I always put by contractual agreement, and that's really for any photo that I've already been paid for or I'm pending payment. Then what I do is I put that in there. So when I send it to them, they know, hey, these photos they can use based off of what we already agreed upon on the contract. And I'll show you how I kind of archive these based off of the contract that I completed for this particular event. So now that all of that has been set up, it is time to hit export. Once the export module pops up, I always like to verify that all 44 of my photos have been selected. There have been a number of times when I click export thinking I'm exporting all the photos at once and end up uh, only having a handful of the photos selected. So make sure that this number matches the number in the upper right of your browse module or don't, that's a choice for you. Uh, then what I'm gonna do is modify my Vero uh, upload here. And what I like to do is rename the files because they don't need to know the file number. Uh, I do leave the sequence number. So we're gonna call this JT, JTSD, bike race 2023 underscore and then the sequence number. And you can see the name up here. Uh, I'm not as concerned about the date. And the reason for that is because it's already baked into the files themselves. So I can find that metadata later. So now that I have the title of the files ready to go and the sequence numbering, then we can move down to destination. I like to choose ask when exporting personally and that's just going to allow me to choose the file and navigate there when I hit the export button and then inside of deliverables I like to put put into or put in subfolder and then title that folder deliverables and then if there's existing photos which in this case there won't be because it's going to create its own subfolder I would replace it but I'm not overly concerned about that so now that I have my destination portion complete I like to scroll down down and select the create a zip archive. What this does is it zips up all of the photos into one file and compresses it. So that way, if I need to upload this to a drive, a Google OneDrive, iCloud, Dropbox, whatever the client may require for me to deliver to them, this just allows me to drop one single file as opposed to uploading multiple images. And then they can download it, unzip it, and do what they need to do. Then what I like to do 
is come down here and based on what our contract said, I either select JPEG or TIFF or PNG if I'm doing something that required them to have a PNG. Um, sometimes I do offer DNGs, but that's obviously at an upcharge, but this gives me the opportunity to select that for my clients. Now, if I promise to deliver both JPEG and TIFF for whatever reason, then what I do is duplicate these settings and I create one that's gonna be the JPEG client deliverable, and then the other one is gonna be TIFF client deliverable. And then I always deliver image quality at 100% and the reason for that is if they want to downgrade the file at least they had the best file that I could possibly give them um, at least what I think now I don't mess around with resize sharpening but I do check the metadata option we're gonna go ahead and expand that and the reason I check the metadata option is because I want them to have the keywords description and then the IPTC contact as well as the copyright info because that's what we filled in over here on the right side. So we filled in the contact and we also filled in the copyright. That's going to bake all of that information into the photo. Now, I have no problem with them knowing what I shot this with. So if I, you know, I'll click camera info as well. So that way they have the camera, the lens, the focal length, the shutter speed, all of that stuff. And, you know, I know a lot of photographers that I've talked to in the past, they've said that they never want to give the camera info to a client because then they feel like the client's going to be able to mimic what they do. And, you know, I'm... <laughs> I'm not that crazy about it. I don't think that anyone's going to try to mimic what I do. Uh, the reason that they come to find me is because I simplify stuff for them. Many of the clients that I work with, they don't even know that that information's there. If they do stumble across it, then so be it. But I'm not going to overly concern myself with it. Now that that's ready to go, before I hit export, what I want to do is rename this overall setting. So I'm going to hit save preset and we're going to call this client deliver JPEG and then I'm gonna hit save and it's asking me if I want to change my Vero uploads which I do not so I'm gonna hit no on that and then I am going to close the Vero uh, or uncheck the Vero upload export feature so that way I'm only delivering or exporting the client deliver option now what I'm going to do is click export and I'm gonna get a pop-up box asking me where do I want to save my file well I'm gonna navigate to the folder where that file is so I'll speed through this so that way you don't have to watch me click through a whole bunch of stuff so now I've navigated to the folder where all of my JTSD bike race photos are for this particular event and then all I have to do is click open and it is going to save all of those files in the background so it's gonna say export job number one here and I'm just gonna let that run in the background this is where I usually go and do some of the uh, the requirements of just managing a business right and working with clients where maybe drafting the email that I'm going to send to them with their information on it uh, or going and verifying that I receive payment if that was agreed upon in the contract that I would receive the payment um, between the time of me photographing the event and before I deliver the final images because then I may have to send them a note like hey man I haven't received the initial payment that I was supposed to get for my deposit and then however that works but that's all business stuff I want to stick to the workflow but this is that is a part of my my workflow overall because while this is exporting there's really nothing that I care to do inside of on one mostly because I don't want to cause any issues with the exported files so I just let this be I'm gonna fast forward through this so that way you can just see what it looks like once it's all said and done here is the folder where all of the final images are now residing as you can see it's given me the photo as well as the on photo um, XML file now this is important because there is metadata in there um, but I don't deliver this particular item to my client so what I'm gonna do is right click and we're going to go clean up by kind so now I have all of those metadata files down here at the bottom because if I right click and 
click get info. And if I go to more info, you'll see that all of that information is already in the JPEG file. So I don't need that information anywhere else other than right here. So that's the reason why I don't need these particular files. So what I'm going to do is select all of those, hit command and delete. And then I'm also going to hit command and delete on all of these. So now that I have all 44 of the images right here, what I'm going to do is right click and I'm going to click on compress and it's going to combine all of these into another zip file. So the zip file that I had before, if I needed to provide the XML file, if I ever negotiated for it, then I have that record ready to go. But if not, then I just use the version that I'm zipping together right now, which is going to be just the JPEG photos. So when I deliver this, they'll unzip it and have their photos. And that's really all most of the clients that I deal with really care about. Now, when I start dealing with uh, bigger clients and people that have editors, maybe I'll concern myself with delivering the, uh, the meta files or I'm sorry, the XML files, but I'm just going to click here and JTSD, oh, JTSD, Bike Grace 2023 final edits. And so now I have a deliverable document that I can give to my client and they'll go on about their day. And then I also have this document here, which I do need to rename. So now I have two files. This is, I have my JTSD archive file with all of my metadata and XML files inside of it. And then I have my JTSD bike race file with all of my photos inside of it. This is what I would deliver to the client. And this is what I would put into my archive. So later on down the line, if a client comes back to me and they say, Hey, here's what I need uh, you to look into. One, I have my XML file that tells me the file name, which is really important because I leave the original file name associated with the, with the photo. Uh, if you look here, pull this over for a second. The original file name is in that XML file. So I can always recall whichever photo that they reference. So they tell me the sequence number. They say, I need sequence number 25. I know that this is number 25. I go find that inside of this archive and then I open it up. It'll tell me the file name on that XML folder and then or I'm sorry, on the XML file. And then I just come over here and I now know how, which photo I need to make tweaks to. So now it's time to move on to the final video of the series, which is the archiving process of all of the images, as well as the contracts and everything else that goes along with it.